Hi YouTube, my name is Zeno and I'm a pilot. And no, I'm not your race pilot or any car related one. I'm just your typical old boring airline pilot. And as you know, probably now in such a hard times for Europe in the world, we are experiencing some restrictions. And the one thing to do with your free time is for me definitely to do something new. And what is that new going to be? You will see very soon. We are talking about the beautiful nature and my very, very big passion, and that is cars. So let's start off with some history. The current model you see here is a 2018 X4 M48 G02. However, I want to date just a little bit back with the whole history about the whole coupe SUV concept. And it starts with the BMW's first revolutionary model, the X6 E71. It was a model presented in 2008 with a very, very interesting concept because it was for the first time that we can see that coupe edge. And more importantly, it was the times where BMW had, had to prove that they have a design people are going to like. And that's how time passed and more than 250,000 units produced and sold later proved that the recipe apparently is absolutely correct and more and more people like it. The X4 and the X6 came. The X4 F26, however, at least to me personally, and its design was a little bit boring, was a little bit not too distinguishable from the X3 and in times where the, the Mercedes with their GLC was coming into the market everybody was take, wanted to take a piece of the pie so they had to really step up their game still they managed to sold or at least to produce more than 200,000 units which is a very very good number and that's where the new generation came the revolutionary X4 I think looks very very distinguishable now and it has a lot to offer in that very very saturated market as you can see here, you have plenty of different options and the new generation is coming longer, wider, taller and 50 kilograms lighter, which makes it a little bit more enjoyable to drive, especially in that X4 M4DI model, which I think is the best compromise and I'm going to explain later in the drive why. Let's continue with the, side, the front three quarters of the car and this is going to be, originally the car is coming with cerium grey elements, which are the mirror cups the air intakes and the front kidney grills. I've decided to put a little more personality in it. As you can see, the whole concept continues throughout the car. We have blacked out kidney grills, headlights, mirror cups on carbon fiber, and the front lip again from Maxton Design. So it really gives the car a bit more of a stance and it makes it looking different than most of the other ones. Starting off with the rear three quarters, I think this is one of the most handsome parts of this car. You can probably see and spot that not everything on that car is coming completely stock. However, I'm going to show you a couple of pictures while we are doing the walk around, how the car looks stock and my approach to the car and how I decided to look so I can make it a little bit more personal and distinguishable. Starting off with the 19 inch, which are winter tire and we have 21 inch, again, the same style five spoke wheels. And as you can see here, I've included a rear spoiler, a ductile one, so it can add a little bit on that wider truck stance. Another thing we have is the exhaust. The exhaust is very, very interesting and very unique to this car. However, we have some differences which are very important to be mentioned. As you probably very know, in Europe at the moment, we have the OPF, which stands for auto particular or gas particular filter. It sounds, and I would say it dampens the sound a little bit. I will show you how it sounds. <laughs> 
probably the most important interesting part for me and probably all you car enthusiasts and it is under the hood namely the lovely B58 engine from BMW it is a 3 liter inline 6 cylinder engine producing 354 horsepower and 500 newton meters of torque Let's start the interior review with a couple of things for me the most important because this is the place that I have my eyes on and I'm touching most importantly most oftenly and this is the steering wheel typical BMW fashion nice thick leather steering wheel which is absolutely amazing i personally love it it is packed with optional auxiliary heating so in the winter days you have absolutely no issue it gets warm quite quick you have the optional pedals that comes with automatic transmission for some more enjoyment and engagement in driving i just put an extra carbon fiber paddle adjusters which are not original because that car has as i already mentioned quite limited amount of options available on the aftermarket especially from bmw the next thing is a digital cluster, which I really like. It's very simple. You have the three modes, comfort, echo and sport, and it changes the dials. It's not as developed as the Audi's or Mercedes system. However, to me, this will last longer and it's not going to age as bad as the other ones. But that let's what we'll see and let the time show. The most important for me and the best thing you have is the iDrive system. It is quite easily controlled with the scroll of the, of the this, uh, with the scroll wheel here and you have all the shortcut buttons like media back to menu and map and everything you can just literally reach while you're driving so it doesn't distract you much it's on your eye level and it's very very smartly built what also i think it's extremely well built is the car in general you see only good materials nice brown leather very good materials aluminium all over the place galvanized buttons Piano black, which scratches easily, yeah, but all we know, it makes the whole ambience definitely more luxurious. Everything you touch on the dash is super soft. You have the Alcantaras, even the lights are in beautiful shape with modern LED style lighting. The sunroof opens quite wide, so you have absolutely no excuse not to get as much fresh air as possible. And the Harman Kardon optional sound system is just a beautiful thing to have, and I definitely recommend that in the car. It has everything for everybody a downside of the car i would say a couple of things that i see at the moment it is the door pockets which are from scratchy plastic but it's kind of to be expected and you don't touch them that often and you kind of put everything you have there so you don't really care if you scratch them a little bit another thing is the very very limited amount of ambient lighting that you have it's not on it's definitely not on the level of mercedes and audis but it's still a pretty good one and it works quite well you have plenty of space into the cup holders you can put any if you can see my big cup of coffee you can put it into the cup holder quite easily it has bolsters to keep the whole cup very tight and i even love to bring my massive bottle of water it's a two liter it's like bigger than most of the store bought brands you can buy and it fits into the door seals perfectly so why i chose this car interior wise it has the best technology it's very easy to use it's very practical quality wise as you can see it's beautiful and very very well made so it, all we know it's a win-win situation also we have the sunroof which is another option as well the very beautiful led lights which mimics the whole idea of the car with all the vents and all the headlights and tail lights so it's been very well designed and it does work in every single aspect i want to show you later the back of the car let's kick off with the interior and the back side of the x4 at the moment at the moment the front seat is set to my driving position you have plenty of leg room and plenty of headroom i've seen so many reviews when all the people are complaining how limited the headroom space is i don't understand that i'm 182 centimeters and i have no issues whatsoever fitting into that car i've i've brought tall friends to the car they've been traveling here as long as you have two people they'll have plenty of space because you can stretch your legs yes the seat is a little bit inclined forwards however is the, the fact that you can stretch your legs and the fact that you can literally straighten as much as possible makes the whole drive comfortable so to all people that are scared to buy a coupe suv because they think there will be a very very limited amount of space in the back don't that's not true in my opinion and you can have an absolutely 
perfect experience at the back. You can see the whole concept continues, everything is stitched in leather with nice aluminium with the X signs here, more leather at the top, the wood interior inserts here, galvanized buttons and it's in general very nice place to sit in. You have your own climate control, you have heated seating and if you want to do anything with the 12 volt socket like vacuuming your car, you can do it anytime because you have the option to. That's the most important things for me at the back of that car. Another thing that is very neatly made is the ski through hatch for loading taller items or just your skis or snowboard if you like the winter sports. It's quite easy because the seats are 40, 20, 40 splitting so very easily you can sit still two people and have the tall items here in the middle. Last but not least, we have to have a look at the boot because this is another thing that many, many people are scared of and think it's a big sacrifice. Let's open the boot space. You have an electric tailgate standard to all models and as you can see, there is a massive amount of space that you can use. Yes, it is a sloping roof line, so you'll not be able to pack big boxes on top like a normal X3 for example would. However, it's a very, very usable space. You have underfloor catch that you can put some things underneath and I have for example my BMW snowboard sucked in that and as you can see you have netting, you have hooks, you have literally everything. The best thing in my opinion is that you can stow both parcel shelves underneath the floor cover all together but if you want you can just release all the seats from here so you don't have to go and manually pull them and that's very handy if you have to load heavy items immediately. That's pretty much it. You have the metal plating scuff so you don't scratch anything over on the car and it's in general a very nice experience. And we're continuing now down to the street so we can try the car in typical city driving. Again, we in Bulgaria, we don't have the perfect road so it's gonna be a very good representation of what the car can do. You can already feel there is quite some potholes everywhere. However, isolated wise, like the car is very, very isolated so no out ambient sounds. It's at slow speeds, perfectly nice to drive, very comfortable. At faster speeds, the car gets a little bit more noisy, especially with the M mirror cups and a little bit of tire noise, but that's quite normal. So nothing to be really uh, scared about. About dynamic driving, I've had that car for more than one and a half years now and it's been a joy to drive. The M Sport brakes are really, really well and suit the car because it's a heavy thing. It's 1900 kilograms, so it is definitely better than its brother, the X6, the bigger one, but it's still it has the weight and the taller center of gravity means that you cannot go into the corners as quick as you would do in a normal car so you need the brakes before corners and they are extremely well of course it's not a truck car you're never going to truck it anyway so you don't really need that amount of performance if you do you can go for the mx4m competition at the normal model they are in a different league they are pretty much what the next M3 is going to be. So it's going to be a very interesting car and they're hinting, hinting that to us. Uh, at the moment, these cars are having 510 horsepower. This is for me, however, the sweet balance because you have that 360 horsepower. It's very quick. It will punish most of the cars on the road. In the meantime, you can leave it in Eco Pro, slackens off the suspension like in Comfort, reduces the throttle response. So it gets a very, very normal car to drive. It loses the whole hooligan thing that it has. As you can already feel now, we are driving towards the city center and it's absolutely perfect. Very interesting thing about the economy, as I can give you the long term economy on that car, the complete average is 12 liters per 100 kilometers and city driving, it goes when there is heavy traffic up to 15 and I've seen that car in a normal driving, it means highway speeds in the range of 120 to 140 kilometers, it goes down to around 10 liters. So the complete average, 12 liters per 100 kilometers, which is pretty nice for the type of engine. The start-stop system, I don't use it that often. However, it's a good thing to have, especially in heavy traffic when you have to wait a lot on traffic lights. So the car in general, absolutely good balance for everything. I really wanted to get an M3 when I was looking for one car, but if you're looking for one car and it has to do it all, you can consider it because it has the looks with that coupe style. If you're not the coupe type of person, go for the X3 but it's light, it's nimble, it's not as big, so you can still maneuver it quite easily in town. You have amazing camera systems with 360 degrees and it's just very, very easy to use into the city. And always, if you want to take it on a highway for a longer drive, it is the perfect car whatsoever with that. Now we have three 
modes for sport, sport, sport individual and sport plus. Sport individual you can literally select all the settings and in my case just the engine sound is on, everything else is in comfort so you can use it on a daily basis. As soon as you switch to sport or sport plus, floor the throttle and it just rockets. Very nice thing, it saves fuel and it helps for the whole overall comfort. That's pretty much it for the drive. As a conclusion, I would say if you are looking for a sleek car and you want to have the perfect balance between everything, consider an SUV. Yes, I know they're not for everybody and that's fine. However, it is tow, so you can clear easy the obstacles and potholes and everything. It is still very quick, the M40 models, you have M40D if you want to be looking for more fuel efficiency. However, the M40i, the whole experience is amazing because you get the sound, you get the performance. So, what's my opinion on the brand new X4 M40i? If you are on the market and you're looking for exactly one car that needs to do it all for you and you are on the more funkier style with that sleek, coupe roofline, Consider the X4. It doesn't matter if it's gonna be the M40i, a two, two liter diesel or anything, it's a very nice car. If you are on the other side a little bit more conservative and you don't wanna pay the extra premium, which is by the way around 2000 euros more for the X3 model, then consider it. It's a very nice car, comfortable, full with technology, and it offers everything you can imagine from a car. Thank you so much for today. I don't believe I'm gonna say that, but if you like, if you like just the video, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and I'm gonna see you on the next one.